Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Imam Muhammad Musri, and in this month of Ramadan, we are going to take some of the ayat, the verses from the Quran, and do a little bit of explanation and commentary about the importance of these ayat or these verses. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. So it is appropriate that we consider the message of the Quran during this month. The Quran, as you know, is a full book and it is composed of 114 surahs or chapters and it has 6,236 verses. It is very difficult to read every verse and explain it in this uh, short month. But every night, <coughs> Imams around the world, they read from the Quran, from their memory, one thirtieth of the book, one part each night, so that in the month of Ramadan they complete the whole book in reading. And I know that a lot of people listen to it and may not be fully understanding what they are listening to. Therefore, I want to select each night a few verses, one or two verses that we can comment on and I hope that would be helpful in understanding the general message of the Quran. So, in this first episode, we will start with the first surah of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha which is chapter 1, consists of seven verses. And these verses are repeated in prayers, in salat, in every unit of prayers, every rak'ah, five times a day. Many of us read it while praying in a hurry, without contemplating the message of this prayer. Why is it important to read it in every unit, again and again and again, 17 times every day and 365 days a year throughout our lives. But while we don't pay attention to it, it is the cornerstone of prayer. No prayer is accepted without reciting the surah. All Muslim children know the surah by heart. All Muslims know it by heart. They read it in every prayer. Are we spending the time to listen to ourselves while we're reading it, to understand what it means and to mean what it says? This surah starts with the statement Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful or the source of mercy, the merciful. These four words really begins every surah in the Quran except Surah Tawbah. And these four words, they are what we are supposed to say before we embark on doing anything of significance, before we eat, before we walk, before we drive. We should always begin in the name of Allah. And Ar-Rahman is another name of Allah, refers to the fact that Allah is the source of all mercy in this universe. And Ar-Rahim emphasizes that He is merciful to all of His creation. The Surah begins with this as the first opening of the Quran in the name of Allah, the Merciful. And then it seconds with the praise of Allah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. When we praise Allah, we are praising the Creator of all that exists, the Creator of the multiverse. Notice in this second verse, this fact is being stated, all praise to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, Al-Alameen in Arabic, 
really refers to multiple worlds or multiple dimensions or multiple universes. It is not just one. Now, with science, we are beginning to understand or to imagine what that could mean. But over 1400 years ago, when this verse was revealed, it declared this fact that it's not just our world, but there are many worlds that Allah is the creator of and He's the Lord of all of these worlds. And restates that He is the source of all mercy, that He is merciful to all that exist in this multiverse. The fourth verse emphasizes that there is a day of reckoning and accountability. Maliki Yawmid Deen. He is the one who owns and who rules in that day. There are no other rulers or kings. There is no one who can speak without permission on that day, the day of judgment. That day of judgment should be on our minds every minute of our lives because we are in this short life here to be tested and everything we say or do, think or feel, love or hate, every action, every word is being recorded. And then on the day of judgment, Allah is going to render His judgment based on our work, our actions, our intentions, our thoughts and feelings. Therefore, we state in the fifth verse, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ only you, O Allah, we worship, and only you, O Allah, we seek for help. This is important in Islam, the idea of monotheism, complete tawheed, and that is we do not take any partners with God. We do not worship anyone else but God. And this pure monotheism is the message that all the prophets came with since Adam through Noah and Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob, Joseph, Moses and Aaron, all the way to Jesus and Muhammad. They all came to declare that there is only one God. And that's why in the next verse, verse 6, we say, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ guide us to the straight path guide us to the right path which path in the final verse verse 7 he says the path of those that you O God Allah that you have bestowed your guidance on those are the prophets those are the righteous believers throughout human history those are the people who did well. These are the ones who Allah blessed with guidance and light and understanding and good work. So we pray to Allah to guide us to be like them. And he says, and not the path of those who lost their way because many people get lost in this world chasing different gods and different interests nor the path of those who knew the right path and chose to go the other way, those who earned the wrath of God. So these seven verses are recited every day in every prayer, and they are repeated so that we connect with God. If we read these verses with contemplation, if we read them one by one and not lump them together and read them fast and think about them while we're reading them, then we establish that direct connection with God. I hope that every time you stand before God, before Allah to pray, and you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, that you think about the meanings of these words. What are you speaking to Allah with what are you saying what does it mean to you because 
as much as you contemplate and understand these verses and these words, that's what you get from your prayers. We will stop here and we hope to see you next time with new verses from the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.